Hello and welcome to already the fourth installment of the Getting Started with Pixelmator series here on Touch Plus. My name is Sebastian van der Velde and today we're going to take a look at shapes in Pixelmator. With shapes we get vector graphics capabilities in Pixelmator. The three tools that work with vectors can be found in the tools palette. These are the pen tool, the freeform pen tool and the custom shapes tool. Let's take a closer look at these tools. We start off by creating a new image. So we go to the file menu and choose new image. Let's say we are going to create an image that is 600 by 600 pixels. After we press OK, we get presented with our new document and depending on what you have set in the Pixelmator preferences, you have either a colored or a transparent background layer. For our example, it doesn't really matter what color the background layer has. Let's take a look at the pen tool first. This tool is ideal for making vector shapes from existing photographs by tracing edges. But you can also make quick custom shapes like I'm going to demonstrate now. To make things more easy, I'm going to activate the grid. We go to the view menu and choose show grid. Depending on the settings you have in the Pixelmator preferences, your grid might look a bit different. Let's choose the pen tool. We click one time on the point we want to start and then move to the next point. You see that because of the grid, the pen tool will snap in place, making it much easier to stay symmetrical. When I'm about to close the shape, a little message pops up near the mouse pointer, saying close path. And when we click, the shape closes. You don't have to close a shape. The pen tool can be used to make straight and curved lines as well. You see that when we close a shape, a fill color gets applied. If this happens, and in what color this happens, depends on what is set in the tool options bar. Here we can change the fill color, or we can choose to fill our shape with a gradient, or use no fill at all. Clicking the color box lets us choose very quickly a new color from the swatches palette. But we can also choose a custom color by clicking on choose color. This will pop up the OS10 color picker for us. Stroke is the edge of the shape. We can give the edge a separate color or a gradient. And we can change the width of the stroke, or as with the fill, remove the stroke by setting it to none. The shadows option let us quickly add shadows. Adjusting the shadow is done in the styles palette, which we can open by clicking on the styles button over here. You see that the styles palette has a lot more advanced options to adjust the style of a shape. We'll get back to this later. I remove the shadow again and close the styles palette. The power of vector shapes is that they are very customizable. Let's control click on the shape and choose make editable. We can also make shapes editable by double clicking on them. The red dots that appear are handles that we can move around to adjust the shape. Our shape now has straight corners, but when we double click on the handle, the corner gets smooth and we can adjust the curvature by adjusting these white dots over here. By moving the handles around, shifting from straight to curved edges and adjusting the curve angles, we can very easily create new shapes. On to the next tool, the Freeform Pen tool. The Freeform Pen tool works in the same way as the Pen tool. The only difference is that you can't click on points on the canvas to form a shape. We have to click and really draw with the mouse pointer to create a shape. This is ideal for those who like to draw with a tablet. Of course the shapes made with the Freeform Pen tool can be edited in the same way as any other shape. For now we have just been playing around with the pen tools to get a feel for how to create and edit vector shapes. Let's delete these shape layers and start making something useful. Like for example an iOS 7 style icon. We are going to use the final shape tool for this, which is the custom shape tool over here. When we click and hold the mouse button on top of this tool, we get to choose between a set of standard predefined shapes that we can use as a basis for our work. Let's select the rounded rectangle shape 
to create the contours of our icon. The rounded rectangle shape has a nifty feature which lets us adjust the radius of the corners. We can do this by clicking and dragging the little blue dot over here. You also notice that Pixelmator remembers the shape style we have used in our previous shape. We don't want this, so we open a styles palette by clicking on the styles button in the tool options bar and click all the way on the bottom on the icon with a large X. On this part of the styles palette, we can choose from a set of predefined styles. The one with the letter X says clear style and gives us a default style that is more pleasant to work with. For this icon we want to remove the gradient and use a plain light grey color instead. So we choose color from the tool options bar for the fill and choose a light grey color from the small color palette. What you also will notice is that after you apply a shape, that the shape tool gets deactivated and the move tool activated. So when we want to create our next shape, we have to select the shape tool again. Let's create another rounded rectangle shape, this time in a darker grey, almost black color, and with a smaller corner radius. Notice that this shape automatically gets placed on a new layer. Let's do some mathematics with shapes. Just as with selections, we can add, subtract and intersect shapes. Choose the ellipse shape from the shape tools. We set the mode to add to shape in the tool options bar. And now we draw a circle. Holding the shift key while dragging constrains the proportions to a perfect circle. We can hardly distinguish the two shapes, but we can go to the little gear icon on the tool options bar and choose show outline. This will show the outline of each shape, making it much easier to work. Let's move the new shape in place. This will be part of the lens of the camera we are going to make. We can quickly copy an existing shape and paste it back onto the same layer by using the key combinations Command plus C for copy and Command plus V for pasting. So let's make sure our circular shapes is selected and hit Command plus C to copy it and hit Command plus V again to paste it. Now we can subtract this shape from the rest by choosing Subtract mode from the tool options bar. Let's put the circle in place and make it a bit smaller. Hold the Option key while dragging to decrease the size of the shape from all sides and hold the Shift key at the same time to keep the circular proportions. Let's do this exercise one more time, but now we add to the existing shape again. So we press again Command plus C to copy and press Command plus V to paste. Change the mode to Add mode, put the shape in place and make it again a bit smaller with the help of the Shift and the Option key. Of course each camera has a shutter button. So let's add a rectangular shape from the shape tools. You see that the rectangular shape doesn't have any extra handles to adjust it. It is just a plain rectangle. So let's draw the shutter. Next up, we are going back to the custom shapes tool and choose the custom shapes icon all the way at the bottom of the list. This will make the shapes palette appear. The shapes palette is a palette where we can store a variety of custom shapes. Also the ones we make ourselves. I'll come back to that at the end of this tutorial. From the shapes palette I will choose the pentagon shape. We're going to make a little viewfinder of it. Make sure before we click on the document that we choose subtract mode again. When we draw our shape you'll see a little slider appear where we can set the amount of points. Or in this case corners we want to have for our shape. We take this down to 4. Now it's no longer a pentagon, but a simple square that has been rotated 45 degrees. Adjust the size and we are done with our camera. Now it's just a matter of selecting the whole shape and center it in the middle of our document. Our camera icon is done. It was quite some work, don't you think? And besides that, we might want to reuse it as a shape in a later project. We can therefore add this shape to our shapes palette by dragging it from the Layers palette onto the Shapes palette. You see a plus sign appear and when we release the mouse button, 
a shape gets added to the palette. Now it's just a matter of selecting it and adding it to a new project. Note though that any shape styles don't get saved, so it's just the shape and not the styles that are saved in the shapes palette. This concludes our tutorial on how to work with shapes in Pixelmator. We've taken a look at the different shape tools, we've played a little bit with shape styles, and we have edited existing shapes and transformed it all into an iOS 7 style icon. I hope to see you back soon next time for our next tutorial. In the meantime, keep experimenting with shapes with Pixelmator. Take care.